appropriate to each grant a franchise like our other franchise agreements have, which allow, well, we just, we're just doing the uh, horse-drawn carriage ones. Uh, they have, I think, a three-year time or two-year time, and uh, the cable has a year number in it, and that should be probably what is done. But right now, it would be open to interpretation that the whole scheme may expire in about three weeks. And I understand from some of the discussion that's taken place that there's some desire that the number of franchises either be amended or uh, by reducing it or expanding it. And that would be something else that could be addressed in that ordinance if that's what you so desire. Ms. Bellis. Just so we're, so we're aware of all our options, what would happen if we simply allowed it to expire? Would that open up the field that, that anybody who wanted to could do it? Or would that make it so nobody could do it? Well... That again is, is debatable uh, because we can put restrictions on the use of our equipment that could possibly allow regulations to be saying that you can't have longer short groups, but then that might be challengeable in a court if we're trying to restrain uh, various groups from using that have legitimate need. So. The clear answer is that there is no clear answer to that. So if we so if we would simply do away with it, that probably would cause more trouble than it would solve. It, it could cause it would cause trouble uh, potentially, but it would also uh, delete a revenue stream that is there at this point too. Although my understanding is not a real large revenue stream, it it is a revenue stream, and it does give the transit department uh, information about when these groups are going to be needing trolleys or, or using trolleys so that they can make trolleys more readily available instead of having a large group show up and wanting to all get on a trolley at a particular time and thereby cause congestion and trouble. Mr. Vita. A uh, little background on this arrangement. Uh, this occurred during a time when the overflow from Branson's group tour business was inundating the city with buses. And in an effort to deal with large over-the-road buses uh, traversing Spring Street, uh, the mayor appointed a commission of a number of people in the community. And through nine months of uh, efforts, uh, we came about establishing a uh, franchise of uh, using, well, we went ahead and bought the trams to do that. What that would do would uh, allow the uh, group tour people to continue making a livelihood, but most importantly would uh, allow groups to traverse the city and, and, and see the, the many things that uh, Eureka Springs have to offer, and hopefully they would come back with their families or independent. Uh, this was at a time when... You know, things were just crazy in Eureka Springs. Uh, and it was very important that we did regulate uh, the over-the-road coaches on Spring Street. Uh, what you have to ask yourself right now that we have the opportunity to review this ordinance is where is that motor coach business today? It has declined exponentially over the course of the last few years, and I don't see any indication that there will be a rebound in the motor coach business just as we regulate the taxi franchise and establish one taxi franchise, I think we ought to look at <coughs> how much business there is actually out there and do we need multiple franchises. Uh, multiple franchises, yes, in the free market that is generally a good thing, but we've established one taxi franchise, so I, I would ask the council because the amount of business has declined to such an extreme extent that we could endanger 
tour operators by having multiple franchises. Yes, <coughs> the competition in the, in the capitalist system is what it's all about, but it could inevitably uh, lead to there being no franchises or people having the ability to make a livelihood off of uh, the limited amount of uh, motor coach tours that are available today. So uh, I think we have an opportunity to uh, look at this ordinance right now and address it in such a manner. Mr. Penner. To, to piggyback along with Mr. DeVito's comments, uh, I think we're at a perfect time also in, in the discussions that I've had and the research that I've done is that basically the uh, group tour franchise business is nothing right now because it can't be because of the time frame on the uh, <coughs> operation. Uh, so I think it's it's a perfect time to, to relook the whole the whole issue and uh, fix fix some of the errors that we have in our ways and uh, do do a uh, as uh, Mr. Weaver said earlier instead of just jacking something up uh, let's let's do it right I mean we've got. In here, where it's not transferable, and then it says that they are transferable in the same paragraph. Those kind of things. Uh, I would I would move that we uh, have a workshop to rework ordinance or chapter 4.20 group to the franchises uh, to uh, include as many people as we can for their input. I think this. This does benefit the city. It's a use of, without it. I'll, uh, I'll second that before you go okay. any farther, so that it could be okay. the, the clerk could okay. record it as a motion. Thank you. Made and seconded. Please take your motion, please, so she can get. Move the way of a workshop. Okay. okay. Motion is. <coughs> motion is to have a workshop on redoing the franchise group tour. The group tour franchise. There is a second. Any further discussion? All in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? <clears throat> uh, motion carried. Could we add a date to that perhaps? Yeah, oh jeez, I don't know. We're gonna be busy with We need we need to have a workshop budgets. for our goals. We need a <coughs> workshop. <coughs> yes. Is it okay? Recognizing Mr. Gunnels. Question. Um, the question I have is then what happens since this is up to expire on the 21st of December. Um, also, my concern about that is that tour groups, of course, are already booking. Again, uh, just Take addressing name, Joe. Uh, Joe Gunnels, Joe Gunnels Tours. Okay. Um, <clears throat> just a question if the, not if, but the franchise agreement at this time uh, would expire on the 21st of December this year. Um, point also, this has been renewed, the franchises have been renewed at least three times, I believe, through the years. This may, I, mean, I think this is the fourth time that they've renewed. Um, the wording, uh, you know, maybe you have to go back and look at one of the previous ones. Uh, and uh, as Mr. Ponell said, uh, too, they, they have been trans. They originally was written to say they were non-transferable. In other words, we couldn't sell them or transfer them to someone else. Then it was changed at the next time that the ordinance was rewritten and and uh, and approved uh, to where we can. Uh, so anyway, my question and concern is time-wise uh, for the because motor coach groups are booking right now. Uh, we've already booked several with transit for the upcoming year, and so we, you know, just for timeliness, uh, wondering when that workshop will be. Good point. Can we just take the date out? Mr. Bean. Well, we're in the unfortunate position tonight that we can't rewrite the ordinance tonight and do anything really with it. I mean, would there be any possibility of a temporary extension or lay that up for the city attorney? Mr. Weaver? You'll have to 
change the ordinance. Since it's established by an ordinance, you would have to pass an ordinance to change it. And in doing that, you're better off to rework the whole document if you're going to rework the document. But you could pass, potentially, I suppose, an <coughs> ordinance with an emergency clause that uh, removes that one paragraph but then you would have no expiration date and you would have the two franchises that are granted uh, would have to agree to it. Otherwise, you're amending the contract with them. Mr. Bear. Well, I understand what Mr. Gunnels is concerned about, but also it seems to me that uh, <coughs> unless we do something silly like what Ms. Balance was talking about and not do a franchise at all, I don't think we're going to have to worry about not being able to commit your tours that are going to be here. You obviously have a franchise, and we're going to have probably a franchise. The situation is whether we'll have one or we'll have two, which the other gentleman's here about, and I'm hoping that uh, the other franchise is, um, we've already known she's going to give up her franchise as it is, so she obviously had not booked anything. So I don't think, you know, if we get this in, we're still going to have to have an emergency clause on the ordinance uh, when we rewrite it. Uh, and we still won't be able to have that until January. But I don't think, as far as your concerns about any of the bookings that you have, I don't think that's going to be affected. I, mean, I think I can't guarantee what this going to do, but I'm pretty sure we'll keep the franchise. Mr. Connor? Would it be no, no different than any other pre-existing, I don't want to say pre-existing condition, if he's got 20 tours booked and we change the ordinance, as long as he still qualifies for, because I don't see that many major changes, uh, it would be one of those, he was already doing it whenever he booked them as, as of that date, just like we did in a non-conforming uh, addresses that they were operating as such. He was operating under a franchise agreement with the city when he booked those tours. Uh, al allow those tours to be honored under under that franchise agreement. Mr. Weaver? You could allow them, but I don't know that they would be allowed as a matter of law. And I caution in considering to tell him that he can potentially book uh, with uh, impunity because it could be that when a new ordinance is drafted, if you restrict it to one franchise or even if you leave it at 20 franchises, he may not get one of the franchises. Not <laughs> put him in a bad perspective, but he is telling you he needs to know and so you probably need to take that to heart that the quicker you can do this, the more sure footing you're putting him on so he knows and the other gentleman knows whether they're going to be able to operate this in the manner that they're looking at. So I know, I know you're pressed for time, but unfortunately the ordinance is pressing you even more. You really Mayor, to need to do something okay. quick. Mr. Effio, you had your hand up. We can't really end a franchise, can we? Except through non-use or misuse. That's I mean, my understanding. unless he misuses it at some point between now and when we get to it, we can't really end. It. He has the franchise. No. Mm -mm. No. As of December twenty-first, not as of the does. expiration date. At least, arguably, not as of this expiration date in about three weeks. There will be none at that point. When's your first uh, tourist schedule for? Us? Uh, I believe, I, I know early April, I'm not, I think it might be in uh, March, but, oh, I'm sorry. I think we have plenty of time then. We get to postpone that to January and we can't do a single thing here today. Mr. Pena. His, his point is, you know, common business sense, you know, he can't sit back and wait until...
I, I don't know how we got ourselves in a position where we've got an ordinance with an expiration date of December 21st and we're considering it for the first time on the 1st of December. But I, I, I don't envy the position that he or anyone else who is in this fray uh, to, to say go ahead and book them and hope that, that everything happens right and yet at the same time we're going to shoot ourselves in the foot business-wise for Eureka Springs overall if, if we don't have something that allows us to, to continue until we can fix this December 21st, 2011 date. Joe, mm -hmm. Well, I just want to bring to the, to the you know, attention to everyone. I know that uh, James, James is probably, uh, probably remembers this because um, he and I both served on that committee that he referred to earlier. Um, but the, I think it's important for all of the council to understand this point is that the franchises um, that were given, it was set up, as uh, James said earlier, was because of the amount of motor coach traffic going through the historic loop. So if we get rid of the franchise altogether, um, then there is another, I'm not, I guess, an ordinance or a law that restricts large vehicles uh, in the historic district. So if we do away with the franchise and do away with the trams that was purchased to accommodate the groups, the motor coach groups, then th what we will send a message out to, uh, and I can tell you that in the motor coach business that it goes viral very quickly, uh, is that Eureka Springs uh, no longer allows motor coaches at all. Yes, they used to do tram tours. Now they don't allow, they don't have the tram tours, and motor coaches can no longer, they, they cannot, still cannot go on the historic loop. So group tour passengers have no way of receiving a local tour of Eureka Springs. And one might wonder, well, why don't you buy your own bus and do your own tours? Because to do that, because of the other ordinance, the other, uh, the, the large vehicle, I'm not sure the title of it, but because of that, it is a length restriction to, I believe, 30 feet. Um, so you would have to have a vehicle 30 <coughs> feet long that would accommodate up to 57 people that rides on potentially motor coaches, the largest one I know of, other than an articulated one, which is like a an extended one, but the larger ones now are 57 passenger. You couldn't get 57 passengers in a 30 foot sh or shorter vehicle. One trolley can't accommodate a group. So I'm just, in, you know, my letter that I've given each member just ask you to read that and consider that in your decision um, and, you know, just an expedited decision. So. I think you hit him at first. Yeah, it seems like we're only discussing a couple of issues here. The uh, the transferable, non-transferable, and the limit on franchises. And couldn't we have the uh, ordinance written up, have a meeting, and just figure out those two issues and be done with it? I believe there's another couple of issues in this ordinance that Smitty uh, addressed in an email, I believe, to Ann. Uh, one was the percentages. He has some, some concerns over the percentages. Yes, sir. For, for the sake of Eureka Springs business, whether it's tour business, retail business, whatever the case might be, uh, <clears throat> I don't know if we can do it, but I would like to, to know if we could take and do a one-line ordinance that basically deletes the duration paragraph 4.20.04 and have the city attorney write it, take a, take a break and come back and read it and put an emergency clause in it and continue doing business. To be fair to everyone, instead of just throwing everybody's business up in the air, including Eureka Springs, because that's what's going to happen if we delay this. And I think it would be fair to anybody that's wanting to either apply for a franchise or continue a franchise. Smitty, chime in on this one. Let me address the, the expiration of Ken Smith Transit Director. 
reading through Lamont's notes on the last time this was uh, put in, one of his concerns was the life expectancy of our trams. They're 17 or 16 years old now. One tram does not function. It's going to cost $13,000 for the part to fix it. We don't believe it's worth fixing. That was Lamont's concern, was if we went past this date, what shape are the trams going to be in? Uh, two of them work fine. I have mechanics baby them for they will stay working. But that was Lamont's concern, was will these trams last? And these are city purchased vehicles. We cannot use federal funds to buy sightseeing equipment. <clears throat> So there's another concern that comes up. I can make a final comment and then I'll sit. Okay, go ahead. Um, my final, really, my final comment for this meeting at least is just uh, not just in question about renewing it, because quite honestly, I didn't even know that was going to be an issue. It hasn't been at any of the other times that the franchises have renewed, so I wasn't expecting that. Uh, so that was not addressed in my letter as an original concern. What my, my letter expresses uh, is this concern. The fact is the numbers that created this need for franchises to be issued and trams to be purchased and used uh, was based on numbers that I reflect in my letter uh, in 1993 before the trams were purchased, before it was even thought of. Uh, but. Our company, Joe Gunnell's Tours, did 1,100 tours in one year in the <coughs> Springs. Last year, and I have the numbers, and they're verifiable. Well, you can verify them with transit. Um, but according to Sandra Torsha, who is not going to renew her franchise request, uh, and my groups for one year this year did a total of less than, or right around, uh, but, but I believe less than 80 groups for the entire year. Uh, we did 1,100 tours, just my company, in 1993. So this is, you know, as I've addressed, it's not about selfishness. It's not about greed. It's about survival. There's not enough motor coach business uh, to support two franchises. Uh, no offense, I've never mis uh, met Mr. Varner. Nothing personal to him or anyone else. The facts just bear out that the system just can't, you know, it can't support two different tour franchises. And I just ask, that's, I appreciate you giving me the time to do that. That's just my request for consideration. And if there's another meeting, we'll attend, of course. Thank you, Joe. Okay, Mr. Pena. I think the other oh, Mr. Warner. Yes, come on, come on up. We'll give you your return at the moment. <clears throat> I'll take just a moment of your time. Um, I've been working, of course, I told you briefly, I've done motor coach tours. Um, so I take coaches, take folks all across the U.S. And um, I was shocked at how many people didn't know about Eureka Springs. Um, so a series of events happened, and I started marketing. I've got several groups scheduled for next year. Here's some of the marketing materials. Um, I, my niche is uh, in the group tours is, is churches and church groups and larger churches and residual bringing them back. I won't bore you with all the details. But the bottom line is there is no, I don't see that it being like it was back in the 80s when I was a little boy running through here bumper to bumper. I, I hope it is someday, but, but that's not my, what I'm trying to communicate. But I'm trying to communicate that there is uh, tremendous capacity for growth in the group sales. Because I'm on the other side, I talk with the guys putting these things together and um, and started marketing with churches and other group leaders and the the point I I want to bullet point it to you is there is there's potential there this thing is cycling I know it's been I don't need to preach anybody what the economy's been like but everything cycles um, I'm seeing interest we're doing things a little different um, marketing a little different doing some characters and mixing it up a little bit and it's a, appears I say this very humbly uh, to be kind of catching on so I um, I just I just see the upside no I don't think it'll be bumper to bumper 500 coaches a year thing but there is growth there and there's capacity there and we've been working at it for again I say two years um, 
and I've got several groups lined up for next year. So, um, but anyhow, I just I just want the the group to keep that into consideration. That this isn't we're not spiraling down. It we're it, it's not that. Eureka Springs has too much to offer. I take too many groups to too many places across this United States that doesn't have near the the character and the charm and the the uniqueness as to what this place has. So, and it's got a lot to offer. So I think with uh, some work, um, I think that making memories can benefit Eureka Springs, bottom line. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. B. Well, uh, I see, you know, I see hand in glove here. I see a gentleman who's approaching the council, uh, willing to market Eureka Springs with his group tour business. Uh, just off the top of my head, uh, you set up a package deal that's Branson, Eureka Springs. You plug into the system that we have in place in Eureka, which is a component of your group tour business, which is a step-on guided tour of Eureka Springs. I'm, I'm shocked by the numbers. 1,180 in the course of 15 years. I mean, you know, uh, I go back to the taxi franchise. You know, why don't we have multiple taxi franchises? Because is there enough business for multiple taxi franchises in the community? Based on the numbers, and I have no reason to doubt Mr. Gunnels, uh, bringing in another tour is, you know, could jeopardize both of them. The gentleman has other uh, ways of addressing group tour. The unfortunate thing we're facing tonight is everybody's going to have to take their chances on what this council does and government moves slowly and uh, you know maybe we need to enact some type of a system that you know six months out these things come up on on the computer they're flagged and you know we know when the franchises are going to expire but we find ourselves in this situation right now I see one of two options we have a temporary extension of 90 days of the ordinance with all the warts and bumps that's got on it right now or we let the ordinance expire because we can't move this quickly that's just the way government operates and we address this <laughs> ordinance in a workshop so I, I see one of two options we temporarily extend a somewhat flawed ordinance or we let the one expire we have and everybody takes their chances and hopes that the city council can get it right how long would it take you to rework the uh, to rework the whole ordinance yeah. Depending on what changes were proposed, uh, it could be ready in a, a matter of a couple of days. Okay. We can have a special meeting to take care of it. Yeah. There's always that option. Yeah. I mean, if he can get it together and we get yes. notified. I'm sorry. That's okay. Yes. If we yes. have, you know. meeting December 6th. By the 15th, we should have it ready. Is that doable? You're going to have a workshop on the 6th, and then... We'd like to, that should be time for the 15th to have it ready. I have no problem with that. Okay. Mr. B Mr. Pena. Was that a motion, or are we still... Okay. I'll second okay. that. Okay. Motion to have Mr. Weaver rework the ordinance in lieu of the workshop or in, in conjunction with the workshop? I'd say in conjunction with the yeah, workshop. It's gotta it's gotta be reworked. Yeah. Well yeah. 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 Do the workshop. So my rather is do the workshop and then give me a week to before yeah. you have your special meeting. Okay. Sixth of December. December six. Five thirty. That's, that's short time, yeah. Five thirty December six. Okay. Five thirty December six. Okay. Five thirty December six. All right. Any further discussion on this? Question. Time? Could we still not delete 4.20.04 and continue on and, and pass it tonight, or at least address it tonight? And In doing so, you would create headaches for yourself if you then wanted to make actual changes to the <coughs> document. Uh, and potentially, you would have to have agreement of both current franchises or else you would be changing the terms of their contract. So I would suggest not. If we can get it reworked, redone, have a special meeting, it should be back in, in order before the 21st, which is the deadline apparently by ordinance. So 
I think that's that's the game. That's the ball game. All in favor, say aye. 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 Any opposed? Okay. Motion carried. Okay. Thank you, gentlemen. Appreciate it. Thank you, Joe. All right. We'll we'll let the traffic clear out a little bit before we try number eight so we can hear. But it's not adjourned. We're not even close. We're yeah. not. No, we're not. We got free parking talking no. about. We're kind of close. Well, yeah. We we have. A few things to take care of. Yes, Doc. Move to discuss. parking in December. Yeah. Okay. Made and seconded. <clears throat> Floor is open. Mr. Pana. I make a motion that we take last year's resolution, change the dates that correspond with what would be, I believe the city attorney's already started working on it. If we need to take a break so we can make sure we get it right, uh, so that if not, you know, we might as well forget free parking. Second. I don't necessarily need a moment. I think what, uh, since your procedure now in resolutions is to okay. read them before you approve them, uh, that I've marked through this one since we've been sitting here, and this one could be read, and then you can see if you've missed said, anything and make the changes you, you need. You just to. said what I wanted to do. Make a motion that we read. Got a motion. Got a motion and a second. I'm ready. Okay. I'll withdraw my second. Okay. Original motion withdrawn? <coughs> yes. Okay. All right. Now restate another motion. I'm, I make. Yes, sir. I make a motion that we read the proposed resolution. <coughs> second. For the purposes of discussion. For the purposes of discussion, thank you. Okay. All in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion carried. A resolution removing the requirement of paying the parking meters on Spring Street and Main Street and establishing free parking on Spring Street and Main Street from December 1 to December 31st, 2011. Whereas the City Council of the City of Eureka Springs, Arkansas, in an effort to promote business for the city during the period of December 1 to December 31st of 2011, desires to establish free two-hour parking <coughs> on Spring Street and Main Street during the period of December 1 to December 31, 2011. Now, th therefore, be it resolved by the City Council of the City of Eureka Springs, Arkansas, that Section 1, the requirement that a person desiring to park at a metered space on Spring Street and Main Street, or should be or, or Main Street in Eureka Springs is relaxed during the period of December 1 to December 31, 2011. Section 2, free parking, free two-hour parking is established at all city-owned meter spaces on Spring Street and Main Street in Eureka Springs during the period of December 1 to December 31, 2011. Duck. Any time? Any <coughs> time to be free parking? All day. Anytime. I think it's all, all day. Uh, yeah, <coughs> yeah, all day for that period of time. Okay. Let's balance. Just real quickly, <coughs> where it says two-hour parking, during the in the whereas and two hour parking down here in section two should be hyphenated. City owned should be hyphenated. <clears throat> okay, section one. The requirement that a person desiring to park at a metered space on Spring Street or Main Street in Eureka Springs is relaxed during the period of December one to December thirty first, two thousand eleven. That doesn't make sense. The requirement that a person desiring to park at a metered space on Spring Street or Main Street is relaxed. How about the requirement that a person desiring to park at a metered space on Spring Street or Main Street in Eureka Springs and must pay? How can we say that? The requirement that, that this says that a person must be relaxed. The requirement is that you pay. And okay, so it says. And that's being relaxed. Did you get. 
May I have permission to speak? <laughs> yes, sir, you may now. Yeah. What I just said. Yes. Permission to speak, please. Yes, ma'am. It still says. How about the requirement that a person desiring to park at a metered space must pay? The requirement that a person desiring to park at a metered space, space on Spring Street I or Main Street in Eureka Springs must pay is relaxed. The requirement that a person desiring to park is relaxed. The requirement that a person desiring to, re to park is relaxed. You've got to have a must pay or something in there because that doesn't make sense. Uh, this resolution has been going through for at least three to four years without a problem, so I don't see a problem with us going ahead <coughs> assigning a number and, and passing it out. Oh, oh, well, it's no, silly. No, 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 no. I, I make We're in discussion. We're, we're still in discussion. Okay. I'm trying to get to everybody. Go ahead, Keith. I know this is going to be even sillier. <laughs> if somebody got a parking ticket today, they aren't going to have to pay it, and we didn't have this resolution passed. I recommend we change it to the second of December, in all all places. Is that a motion? Amendment? Just it was. That's well, why we have discussion to correct things phase, that so. we feel like needs yeah, to be that's, changed. That's a good point, sir. Uh, all in favor, say aye. I guess. Aye. Yeah. Aye. Okay. Aye. Did he have us? What? Was that a motion? Was there a second? What did we just vote on? Change the name, like you said, to the second. Okay, was it a second? Yes, yes there was a second. Excellent. I think Doc seconded that. Excellent. Yes, sir. I move we sign a number and read the or pass the resolution as amended. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay. Any opposed? I'm sorry. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yes, ma'am. May I direct a question to the yes, secretary? You may. Sir, does section one make sense to you? I understand what your uh, point is, but as was pointed out by one of the other aldermen, I think that it's been commonly explained and commonly carried out for the past several years with ex this same wording. So something that was sucky then and still sucky now, we still, it's okay? That it sucks? Okay, thank if you. If council wants to change it, it's <coughs> changing. No, I think, we, I think we got to where we wanted to be. Thank you, gentlemen. Just give it a number. Resolution number is 590. Okay. This is read for discussion. <coughs> Understanding. Is that correct? That was the motion? Read as amended. Read as amended. Okay. Okay. Approve as amended. Which we did. Oh, thank you. We did. I heard it as read. Okay. I'll change it. I heard it as read. <coughs> you did change it. Or did it to resolve during it? Yeah. All right. That should be it. Then it's should read. Be done. ready to go. Okay. Uh, next is agenda setting for next time. In your packet, <coughs> you should have a. Let me, let me get to it here. You should have a correspondence from Doug Milligan with a copy of a police offense report, a couple of um, estimates from Lewis Collision Center. Basically what happened is this car was parked in the parking lot by the auditorium on the day that we incurred 45 to 50 mile an hour winds, one of the signs blew over into the car and according to the estimates cost 600 and some odd dollars worth of damage. Um, I told Mr. Milligan that I would present this to the council <coughs> for submission to the next agenda due to the fact that he has to take off work to come over here to present it himself. So um, I do have a CD with pictures on it. They're not great, but they're indicative of his paint being scratched and his uh, tail not being scratched too. So, move to uh, put it on the next agenda for discussion. Second. Or I'll move that. I'll make that motion. Second. Okay, made and second. All right. 
Anything else on the agenda? Yes, sir. I hate to throw in another one, but we need a workshop for council goals for 2012. I'd like to propose we have it sometime this year <laughs> behind all the others. For, for finalizing the council goals for 2012. And could we possibly get a list of currently set up workshops and fit it in somewhere that works for everybody? Because the last time we threw out a date and we discussed it, it clear down to the time and everybody agreed and half of us were here and half of us weren't, so. If. <clears throat> okay, then you also have to throw in the fact you're going to have, be having budget meetings, too, so that everybody has the budget God, I hope with them now. Yeah. Which we're getting today, right? You have it. Mr. Yeah, DeVito. We, uh, and I, and I apologize yeah. for the... Uh, she was in your box. Missing the City Council of Goals workshop. Uh, I drove up, and I didn't see any lights on. I tried to call Mr. Fennell. I tried to call his wife. I didn't get an answer. And tried to call another member. We were sitting on the floor out of here. And so I figured that there wasn't a meeting, so I left. That's uh, okay. Anyway, uh, can we not defer this until January for a go? Second. A priority. Motion made and seconded to defer to, to January. Yeah. I know it's an important object, but uh, I think January would be a fine time to do it. Pick the fine time to leave me, Lucille. Main and seconded. All in favor, say aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion carried. Is that the first meeting or second meeting? Well, we can talk about the first meeting, setting up a okay. workshop. Yeah. I'm looking for the budget. I'm sorry. Yeah. Uh, somebody. Mr. Beard, do you have your hand up? Too? No. I'm okay. Mr. Berry. I did. I uh, sent a memo out. Uh, a month or two ago, I'd like for us to uh, see if we can talk about changing our meeting dates for next year from uh, the first and third Thursday to either the second and fourth Thursday or the first uh, Monday or something. I've got a conflict and I'm going to be this second part of my meeting. So, I'm, so I should like to bring that this up. This for discussion? Yes, meeting changed in January? Mr. Penno? It's going to sound ridiculous. I move we suspend the rules and set the meetings for 2012 for the second and, third thir second and fourth Thursdays of the month. We do that in January. Well, what are you going to do? You're going to wait until he misses the first meeting? No, I'll, I'll make the first meeting. This is the second meeting that I've got the conference with. Okay, so for the discussion in January... On okay. meeting changes. I withdraw my motion. Okay. I thought we needed and second and fourth. Okay. Mr. Who seconded that one? Mr. Beetle. Okay. Any further? Okay, no further on the agenda. I think I've got everything that I needed to. Ooh, okay. Um, next in to City Council comments. Mr. Mayor, are you going to set up budget work? <clears throat> sure. Y'all need to set them up. Do we have the budget? What? I don't have any. Do we have dates? Yeah, everybody, everybody has a budget by by the 1st of December, like I was supposed to have. Oh, okay. The 1st of 2012. There's numbers in there. Yeah. Believe it or not. Okay. I, I did not see that. Okay. We made sure that everybody had the budget today. These, Lonnie and, and uh, Yvonne busted good, home good to get job. this thing done. <clears throat> okay. Okay. Um, Y'all pick a date. I'll tell you what we can do right now. We can go ahead and find out where all the other workshops are at. Then we can send out an email to everybody proposing the budget workshop dates. How about that? That work? Sounds good. Yes, sir. Can we make sure that somebody has a key to whatever room we need to have the meeting in? That'd because be nice. my workshop was not very comfortable <laughs> sitting on the floor. Okay. Yeah, we'll take care of that. 
probably didn't have very good lighting either. Okay. It's one of those things that happens. Any further? If not, we're through with the agenda setting. Going to council comments. Mr. Pownell, kick it off. I just uh, one thing. Do we, did we get the results from the roof repairs that we didn't know that was put out for bids? I'd just like to wish everybody a Merry Christmas, and hopefully we can do a better job supporting the city in 2012. Get a to answer your question. Just, you can answer yes. in mayor comments. It's been tough, but uh, we shall survive. Thank you. Mr. Barry? No comments. Wish everybody a Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year. Mr. DeVito? Yes, holiday greetings to everybody and uh, best wishes for next year. Mr. Raphael? Yes, I'd like you to introduce our new uh, finance director. Yes, sir. I was going to do that under my comments. Okay, then. Well, thank you, sir. Move along. Doc? Everybody have a nice holiday. Ms. Balance? Happy holidays. Okay. Under mine. Um, Lonnie, would you step up here? and We're about to recognize you. Oh, ladies, okay. and ladies and gentlemen, this is Mr. Lonnie Clark from Berryville. He's a certified CPA. Uh, he's been on board with us for about a month. And he's the gentleman that, that helped put Yvonne, and Yvonne helped him in a dual effort to get this budget out in time on the date. And uh, if you have any questions, you can ask him now because he said he'd answer anything. Yeah. This your shot at him. Can we read it first? <laughs> no. Yeah. Let's do that. No, don't don't read it first. Yeah. <laughs> no, it was, it was a it was for me at least uh, quite an effort <clears throat> to get it put together. Um, I'm uh, really feel pretty good about it, and uh, I will be available, of course, to answer any of your questions at any time. And everybody knows where my office is, so have questions, let me know. Is there anybody that hasn't come in and met Lonnie yet? Or didn't know him before? Okay. Okay, cool. Uh, thank you, Lonnie. Appreciate it. Uh, I believe we've got a, a gym here, so we'll hang on to him. Um, under my comments, let me start by saying uh, first, Merry Christmas, Happy Holidays to everybody. The second thing is we did get Miss Balance's yield Signed at the Yay, bottom, bottom you. of Douglas. Uh, um, it was a concerted thing. effort there. Um, secondly, we will start working on sewer lines and water lines all around town. Uh, we'll try to get the locations out over the, uh, the public announcement system, maybe on the uh, Channel 21. Sometimes I forget what channel it is because I hardly ever watch it because I'm always here on it. Um, we are getting ready to start handing out flyers for the Polar Plunge, January. And we encourage everybody in the city to come out and jump in the water with the rest of us because it's, it's really cool, basically. <laughs> no pun intended. No, okay, it's, it's cold. Yeah. <laughs> it's really cold. But it's a great cause. I think last year we raised a total of about $6,500, all-inclusive, about $3,500 from just the jump itself. But... Uh, is Diane jumping again? Yes, she is. And we challenge everybody. It's a challenge now to come out and jump in. So, um, in answer to Mr. Pownell's inquiry, we did open bids for the roof repairs on uh, Public Works, and I believe it was the fire station. They are mulling it over right now, uh, both, both department heads, and we haven't made a decision yet. Uh, we're still working on some finite details about what's going on with it. Does that answer your question, sir? Okay. I uh, don't think I've got anything else. Second. Main second. All in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Okay. <laughs>